chilly time at sea, this is something you hope you never have to do. Although it takes this life raft only a few seconds to inflate, if your yacht was sinking beneath you, it would seem like forever. Most people who have to use one of these rafts for real are rescued within days or even hours. They're not designed for long-term situations. Because of that, the supplies on board are pretty limited. There's just a pint of water per person. That's not a lot if you happen to sink in the tropics. But occasionally you do hear extraordinary stories about survival at sea. Dougal Robertson, 38 days adrift with his family. Steve Callahan, 76 days alone in a life raft. And Morris and Marilyn Bailey, 119 days from shipwreck to rescue. To live for that long, we've worked out that each person would need this much food, but this much water. So how do you make up the difference? Well, that's one of the things we'll find out in this program as we explore survival at sea. Well, the sea can be air hostile, if not more so than any other environment. Well, you can have it all, can't you? You can have the heat of the desert, the lack of water of the desert, and you can have the freezing cold of the Arctic all in the ocean. But you can find food here quite readily. That's one advantage. I think the key thing is preparation. Most of those people who have survived for long periods at sea have a mentality, a preparation mentality, that is a necessary part of seamanship. Because when you're at sea, you're entering the world's largest wilderness. Anyone spending any time at sea needs specific survival skills. If you have to abandon ship, you have to know what to do. Even the crew of a frigate like this one has been through the Royal Navy's basic sea survival course, learning skills that save lives. During the Second World War, the Royal Navy lost a lot of people in the water. Something like two-thirds of the people that went into the water didn't survive, about 30,000. We learned that we needed to improve our sea survival training. Stand yourself up and roll in. Uh, roll in, don't step in, always roll in. Okay. One test at the Institute of Naval Medicine showed how poor equipment was costing lives. They found that an unconscious body tends to turn to face the waves, increasing the chances of inhaling water and drowning. Now all Navy life jackets have a simple hood that could have saved thousands of lives. The Royal Navy trains both its own recruits and civilian sailors how to abandon ships safely, so that if they do end up in the water, they'll know what to expect. Of course, our ships are very unlikely to sink, but by virtue of the fact that they are warships, there is always the, uh, the, the possibility that um, the worst could happen. And we would be remiss if we did not train our people in, in dealing with that situation. One of these will keep you afloat indefinitely. But even if you haven't got a life jacket, you can improvise. In 1995, Zachary Mayo was a US Marine serving on the aircraft carrier USS America. The ship was sailing through the Indian Ocean, where the nights can be hot and stuffy. One night, Zachary had come on deck to get a breath of fresh air when a door like this one swung open and knocked him 30 feet into the sea. When you see a ship pull away from you, it's like you're helpless and you can't do anything about it. It was really lonesome and scary. As the ship kept getting further and further away, I knew that I was gonna have to at least hold up until the morning. So you're in the middle of the Indian Ocean with no way of raising the alarm and more crucially, no life jacket. What on earth do you do? I had to kick my boots off. Then I had to take my pants off. And what I'd do is 
I have to go underwater like this. I had to tie the legs into knots. Basically just taking them around and tying a regular knot into them. And I'd fill the legs up to air like this. And I'd just float on them. Zachary Mayo had to spend two nights like this, never knowing whether he'd be found. It was 30 hours before he was even reported missing. I was scared. I was really scared. I basically prayed for God to watch over me and help me get through this. America launched a search, but to no avail. Luckily, Zachary was found just in time by the crew of a Pakistani fishing boat who pulled him to safety. I don't think I could uh, survive much longer due to the fact that I was sunburned, uh, dehydrated. Uh, my muscles weren't able to move anymore and I was pretty much done for. Zachary Mayo's stamina was amazing, but he was lucky to fall overboard in the Indian Ocean, where the sea temperature is in the high 20s. If you fall into colder water like this, then the muscles in your hands and arms seize up, making crucial survival tasks impossible. We set up a demonstration to show just how quickly that can happen. To show that, we're going to ask John here to open a flare um, in air, then we're going to pop him into the water for about 30 minutes. And after that 30 minute period, we'll ask him to do exactly the same thing again. I hasten to add it's a dummy flare, so we won't have to take cover. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Well done, that's three seconds. Very good. We're in re relatively warm water temperature, 14 degrees today. Early summer um, water temperature around the British Isles. The kind of temperatures which people are swimming around in. Hey John, so how are you feeling? Okay, cold. You're shivering up constantly now, are you? Yeah. So when you're ready? After 30 minutes, we repeated the flare test. Remember, John had taken just three seconds to fire it the first time. Go. He struggled to do the same thing after just 30 minutes in reasonably warm water. Now, once you reduce that temperature to five degrees, which is the average winter temperature, then that time extends. That's it, well done. That was uh, 20 seconds. We've measured people taking two, two and a half minutes to try and do this type of activity in the colder water temperatures. And in some cases, of course, they'd fail altogether. People should be aware of these responses and the fact that very quickly you see a significant deterioration in your ability to do simple actions like open a flare, climb aboard a life raft, tie a knot uh, in a rope. And as a consequence of that, with that knowledge, you make sure you get those activities done very quickly before you lose the capability to do them. That's lovely. <laughs> Surviving for minutes or even hours is one thing, but I'm fascinated by people who've managed to go beyond that. People like Steve Callahan who survived for two and a half months after being shipwrecked. Steve had been sailing since the age of 12, intent on a life of adventure. In 1982, he stocked his boat here in the Canaries before enjoying a last beer and setting out across the Atlantic. Steve had sailed from America to England to compete in a race back across the Atlantic, but he'd been forced out of that by bad weather and had to make repairs in Spain. The Canaries were his last landfall before setting out to complete his journey. There you go, Jerry. Welcome aboard. Good to see you. 